And uh, this is lesson four. The title of this lesson is just touch. One of the critical elements of the coronavirus is that we were not allowed to touch to a large extent because of the whole context of social distancing, you know, at least six feet apart. And clearly if somebody is singing or shouting or speaking loud, it has to be greater. And you really avoid contact with persons not in your bubble, people that you're not personally familiar with. Now, the soundtrack for this lesson, hmm? Barry Salmon, Tempted to Touch, huh? Remember that song? Diana Ross, Touch Me in the Morning. Brenda and the Tabulations, The Touch of You, Driving Me Out of My Mind. And Maria Carey, Touch My Body. All of the things that for the last year we have yearned for. Now this thing called touch is very critical and very important to us as social beings. I want to share, you know, take you back to two critical studies in psychology. 1959, the critical study of the Harlow monkey. You know, the objective was to try to identify what was most critical to our development and our socialization. Whether children, babies are drawn more to the comfort of touch or the survival reality of food. And uh, rhesus monkeys were given two options. There was one, a terraclawed mother, terraclawed entity, it's nice and soft and cushiony. On the other side of the cage, there was one that doesn't have mesh wire around it, but it had food. And inevitably, the monkeys would spend more time with the terraclaw mother, cuddled up, making direct contact with, and they were literally weaned in that manner. Now, this study was repeated a number of times, and it established itself as a, you know, a critical underpinning of how we understand human behavior to operate. The importance, especially in the early days of touch, being close. And um, one of the things that we see the elements of this, children who are growing up in foster homes, in institutional facilities from their very young, one of the things that they don't get touched enough. I've had an experience myself visiting a home and the, the little baby's walking around and you know, crawling around just begging somebody to touch me, hold me up, hold me up. Now, what's the impact of this? That for so many of us for almost a year no touching no human contact this must have been stressful in many many contexts uh, it is suggested you know this thing called touch is even so critical that it's part of how certain industries develop a lot of men pay women to touch them we call it massage, yeah? and the, the back massage, the full body massage. It's also been suggested anecdotally that some of women's health-seeking behavior is again paying someone in a professional, trusted context to touch you, touch you, because if you're not in a relationship, you can go for weeks, months, long periods of time without ever being touched and it's something necessary to us. The other element of this lesson, the construct of proxemics. Proxemics is about the space that people grow up understanding how we use space to communicate. Now, in all healthcare and social settings, space is extremely important to human beings. And if people aren't allowed to have their own personal space, it creates problems. Now, for almost a year, we have had literally a lot of space and we are barred from the closer elements of space. Now, proxemics talks about space at four different levels. From touching to about 18 inches, we call that the intimate distance. Now remember, that was largely a no-no during the pandemic. Then that's reserved for lovers, 
for children, for close family members, for close friends and pets, the intimate space, touching to about 18 inches. Next out, we call this your personal space now, personal distance. Begins about arms then, goes out around 18 inches from the persons to around four feet. That's the personal distance. Again, people you trust, you know very well or you want to get know, but not intimate, so don't come within the intimate zone, but that personal zone goes up to about four feet. Again, for the year of the pandemic as such, we were barred from that. What's the impact on us as a people? Talking about four to 12 feet. Hmm? That's called social space. So you see the origin of the concept of social distance. Four to 12 feet, that's where normal social interaction took place. Beyond 12 feet, that's public space now, public interaction. Now, what's the impact of touch and space? The deprivation of touch and intimate and personal space contact. We need to study this. There's going to be a major adjustment for spending a whole year and most of our contact, first of all, beyond the personal zone. We're talking about the social and the public zone. How are we coping with that? It is said that even couples need space because of the constant present and constant tension. One of the things that happened during the pandemic, a lot of relationships broke down. Some relationships survive and got stronger because couples were forced to spend a lot more time together than they normally would. The record shows that there's almost so much time you can spend in that intimate zone, in that personal zone. You need some space outside of that so you can move away. Families need space. If the house is big enough, we'd expect that persons can go to their room, their part of the house and so on. But what about people who are confined to a small house, to a small space, in each other's space, almost 24 hours a day? That same space being used for cooking, for socializing, for working, for childcare, for children's school, issues of space critical critical the issues of touch how will we readjust will there be a rebound effect will there be a rebound effect what about you in your own life how have you coped with the year of social distancing the year of not touching lesson from the pandemic Think on these things.